Okay, so the very first step in the TDD cycle is to write a test. So in order to write your test, you're going to have to think quite carefully about the requirements that you've been given. It may be a new feature, it may be changing existing functionality in your system, but in writing the test you're going to have to think, perhaps more clearly than you otherwise would have done, about exactly what this, this requirement means. And you're also going to have to think a bit about design at this stage too. So in writing the test, you're going to have to think about how to ask the, the classes under test how to perform this new piece of behaviour that you're implementing. And in doing that, you may be making decisions about method names, return types, parameter types, etc. OK, so now you've got a test. The, the next step is to make sure this test fails. Now, this is an important step, as it gives you confidence that the test isn't just going to blindly pass each time. Now, at this stage, you will have literally written no application code at all. So maybe, especially when starting out with a new system, that this test won't even compile yet. But that's OK, that's perfectly expected. It's, it's part of the TDD process. So going on to the, the third step is to actually implement the, the code that's going to make this test pass. Now at this stage, it's important not to get too far ahead of ourselves here. It may be tempting jumping into the application code. You may have an idea of what structures you may need, about what design you might want, but it's important not to get too carried away here. We'll be using TDD to drive all of the changes in the application code. So at this stage, you just want to be implementing as much application code as you need to satisfy the test. No more at this stage. This means that all application code you write is tested. OK, so now running the test again, you should be in a position where the test passes. So you've now verified that the, the change you've made now passes that test that you created initially. So moving on to the next step, now you've got some test code. You're not happy that you're testing the right thing. You've got some application code that satisfies that test. So the next stage is a refactor stage. So looking at the application code, are you happy that it's working as cleanly as possible? Is there any duplication that could be removed, for instance? So when you're writing your code in the previous step, in step three, you're really just concerned about making the test pass. You're not going to be thinking too much about, about the design. So what can happen in this refactor stage, now that you're confident that you've got a, a valid test, that test can serve as a regression test, allowing you to improve the application code that you need to, with the safety of having a test that's going to validate it's still working the same way it was before. One thing I also like to point out at this stage, as well as refactoring the application code, you may also take this point to refactor the test code. As under TDD you'll be evolving test code and application code continuously, it's important not to forget about the quality of the test code too. The test code is going to have to be maintainable in order for TDD to, to work as a process. You don't want to be refactoring application code and test code at exactly the same time. So you may go back to your application code first, refactor that, verify it still passes, and then apply the same treatment to the test code. So refactor the test code, removing the duplication, etc., and then verify that all the tests still pass. So what this incremental approach allows is you to make a series of very small changes, safely and quickly, rather than trying to make one big change at once and hold everything in your head all at the same time. It also means as soon as you do get any test failures, it should be pretty obvious what has caused those failures. You shouldn't have to spend lengthy amounts of time debugging the system just to work out what could have caused that failure. OK, so now you're happy with the application code, you're happy with the test code, you're happy that you're testing the right behaviour. So now it's straight back to step one again. What's the next change you need to add? And basically you'll be repeating this process for, for every change you want to make to your system. Another way you'll hear this cycle described is as red, green, refactor. Red, start with the failing test. Green, you satisfy that test. Refactor, go back and clean up the application code. Make sure the design is all it should be. Okay, so that's what the TDD cycle looks like. But why would we choose to follow such a, a process? What benefits can it bring us?